There would have been some sex texts. Sexy texting. There would have been mm-hmm. some sexy t- texting. There yeah. would have been questions about... I mean, there also would have been like, when can I come see you? Yeah. Hey, after this sexy we texting... We should get together. <laughs> Somebody should suggest that, yeah, yeah, we should get together. Yeah. You want to have a sandwich and maybe try out some of these things we've been writing about? <laughs> <laughs> These positions we keep talking about in full detail. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think you wait. Sexy wait texts long. are a way to know that you might be getting asked out. You're listening to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers with your hosts Greg Barrett and Kane Holloway. Welcome to the show, everybody. A guy beat you. You did. <laughs> we're on yeah. the, we're on the and same. I actually don't care that much. Yeah, you sure do. You say you don't care, but you give a fuck. I know you give a fuck. <laughs> well, I show up every week. You show up every week with a smile on your dumb face. Yeah. And you're ready to go. And I'm you, ready to go. You act like an old man who doesn't care and just wants me off his lawn. But really, the best part of your day is yelling at me. <laughs> it's, well, it's the best part of your day. It's not bad. Yeah. And you, you want me to be playing baseball near your house because you're just a crotchety old man who gets his <laughs> kicks from yelling at kids. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh Welcome to the show, everybody. Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers, a podcast that's here for you. Yeah. You know? To strengthen you. Strengthen you. And to make you, you a better person. Mm-hmm. That's what we're here for because we love you. And we're doing it. And we're doing it. We are strengthening people. Yeah, we strengthen. Look at us. You can see us on the video. Look how strong we are. <laughs> Greg and I are on the same side of the table today. Yeah, we're on the same side of the table. Yeah, we're waiting for our guests for Can you see how far away I am from you? You're so far away. <laughs> what do you expect is going to happen from me? I don't know. What do you think you're going to catch? I don't want to get it. You're going you're gonna to get love. That's I'll what you're going to get. I'll mask up. Mask up and I'll kiss you on the mouth. <laughs> I'll snap it back just to kiss you. <laughs> My favorite part of Seinfeld is when Kramer kisses Jerry. <laughs> I love it so much. The kiss that he gives him is so full on. It's so good. It really is. It really is full on. He uh, just grabs his face and kisses him. And George is so homophobic he can't handle it. Yeah, they're all homophobic. They're all of them. It's crazy. Yeah, that show is super homophobic. It really is. But what's the, what's like oddly endearing about it is how they all just embrace it they're like yeah we're just uncomfortable with gay people it's the 90s what do you want from me yeah, yeah. they're 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 really uncomfortable being gay with uh but they try i guess at the time it was sort of progressive because remember they were like but it's okay if, if you are that whole episode of like they're afraid of being called gay mm-hmm. but it really tr- it like it, not that there's anything wrong with it. Like that whole concept is like oddly progressive and still homophobic, all wrapped <laughs> in all one at the same time. Yeah, it's fucking great. Yeah, so good. Um, and so, so you've just been binge watching Seinfeld. I, yeah, every day. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I do the same thing. Uh, I put them on almost just to calm myself. Yeah. That's exactly how I work. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I love it so much. Uh, we have a question in a DTBFF podcast at gmail.com. Uh, let me, did they want to be anonymous, Patrick? I don't believe so. Usually I, okay. I make note of that. It gotcha, doesn't look gotcha. like it's long enough. Okay. <laughs> how long is too long? This is from uh, Christine. Nah, Christina says... Uh, hey, Greg and Kane and Popsicle Pat, I met a guy on a dating app in early 2021. We are both in our 40s, never married, no kids. I really liked him. And it's been a long time since I met a guy I saw any potential with. He made me laugh, was smart, super cute, and we had a lot of common interests and values. We chatted for a few months, had a few phone calls and video chats early on, but mainly texted. But he would never ask me out on a date. We live three hours away from each other, so it's not like he's around the corner and dating would be easy. First, the reason was COVID before everyone was vaxxed. Then his folks were visiting. Uh, Then I went on vacation. Summer kicked in. The folks left, but still no date. I asked what the holdup was and what he wanted out of dating. He said, I'd like to find my wife and get married and start a family. He still never asked me out, but like a dope, I kept talking to him because it was fun and I liked him, even though I ultimately knew better. Around Christmas time, I asked and an uh, innocuous question about house decorations that turned into him telling me the last few years have sucked and he was sad at not being married or having kids. 
This is after months of talking and still no fucking first date. I was heartbroken because I finally knew for sure that meant he wasn't interested. But did I end it? No. <laughs> because like I said, I'm a dope. Fast forward to present day, still no face to face. After our most recent, are we doing this or not conversation, my resentment and frustration reached a point where I called it quits. I said this wasn't the relationship I'm looking for, much like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's clear this won't work out. He responded two days later in the middle of the night, said he understood and wished me the best, and that was it. Knowing full well that I let uh, the whole thing go on for way too long and that uh, in his own way he was telling me the entire time he was just not that into me. What is a more reasonable amount of time to wait for someone to ask you out before moving on? Is there ever really an acceptable, solid excuse for waiting months to meet someone? I have always been taught that if a guy really wanted to meet you, they would make the effort. Yes, I could have done the asking, and maybe I did in a way, but that was never working in my favor. Thanks, and diagonal cut sandwiches, FTW. What's FTW? For the win. For the win. I used to think it was fuck the world. Fuck the world. <laughs> diagonal cut sandwiches, fuck the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christina, P.S., if you ever find yourself on a, con uh, on a container store date without a measuring tape, whip out some paper money. Dollar bills, fives, tens, whatever, are just over six inches in length and can be used as a substitute. Also, don't ever agree to a container store date. I'm, I'm with that. Oh, uh, yeah, all the way. <laughs> yeah. I agree with Christina wholeheartedly. Yeah. How long is too long? Look, a month? A month? I mean, I just think that when somebody likes you, they ask you out. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And they and they certainly don't wait as long as you waited. And I don't mean to shame you. Because no. you already know how long you waited and you mentioned in your letter. Yeah. But a month, maybe. A month of like a, fr uh, was essentially just a long distance friendship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You waited too long, for sure, <laughs> to pull the ripcord. Right. On that. There would have been some sex texts. Sexy texting. There would have been mm -hmm. some sexy t texting. Yeah. There would have been questions about, I mean, there also would have been like, when can I come see you? Yeah. Hey, after this sexy we texting. We should get together. <laughs> Somebody should suggest that. Yeah. Yeah. We should get together. Yeah. You want to have a sandwich and maybe try out some of these things we've been writing about? <laughs> these positions we keep talking about in full detail? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think... I think you waited. Sexy texts are a way to know that you might be getting asked out. Oh, for sure. Especially if they're being overtly flattering to you over text messages. Yeah. So I mean, like, ten, men tend to love bomb at the beginning when they're into it. You got to be careful of that. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also, if he's not doing any kind of love, it's not even like a love flashbang. <laughs> he's not even bombing you. He's just not showing you any kind of love. Uh, that's an indication as well. Uh, you're kind of, you're stuck wondering. Um, and if, and if you don't ask, that's the other thing. Just at a certain point, you're going to reach your breaking point and then you're going to fucking, you're either going to stop talking to him and f filled with resentment like you did. But before you even get to that point, just ask, yo, are we a thing? Is this a thing? Do you want a sexy text? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, is this a thing? Yeah. Because if it's not a thing... It's not a thing. Yeah, if this is not a thing, I'm going to kick rocks. But, um, you know, uh, there's l quite literally nothing wrong with asking the question. Yeah, and again, it just it's down to actions yeah. and not words. People, can, people will talk your ear off. Yeah. People will talk to you forever. I mean, he, he found a good friend. You were a good friend. Yeah. I uh I went on uh I went out with um some friends of mine and we were like we were uh like out at these um bars that turned into like a nightclub and we were out like dancing and I started to get like this flirty vibe from one of the girls and we were like dancing and then we like spent some time alone and then I sort of just sort of no I noticed that like when we we were alone alone the she pulled back mm -hmm. and I was like mm -hmm. okay okay she was just like having a good time flirting with me on the dance floor like she needed a dance partner and wanted to feel sexy but <clears throat> she's not into me mm -hmm. right you know? 
Like I knew that, so I wouldn't, I wasn't even gonna attempt to make the move. I could like feel it. Um, and so I wouldn't even ask because all of that would have just like f fallen apart. However, if like the dance floor vibe would have kept up there at the place. Yeah, I'm not there. familiar with the dance floor vibe. <laughs> <laughs> now, that might be because I've never been on the dance floor. Come on. I don't know anything about a dance floor vibe. I, I bet I bet you could usher slide all around that. I know what a mosh floor. pit vibe is, <laughs> and it's usually get the fuck off my feet. Hey, can you get off my feet? <laughs> can you stop pulling my hair? <laughs> yeah, I know what the mosh pit vibe is. Is that where you met Amira in a mosh pit? <laughs> Kinda. Did. Yeah. I did meet her at a concert. What, which concert? Well, she was at the Bumbershoot Festival. Ooh. Uh, I was up there doing stand-up, and she was up there uh. to try and sign Sunny Day Real Estate. Oh, wow. Which okay. was, a, mm -hmm. which was a, a band that had a moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. And uh, that was the first time we met. No, the second time we met. That was the second time we met. Yeah, the first time you met was like at a party, right? She came to a party at my house. Which yeah. ha also had a mosh pit. <laughs> there's always a mosh pit. <laughs> if you go to Greg's house, there's always a mosh there pit. There will be a mosh pit. Constant mosh pit yeah, over at Greg's. Yeah, there'll be a mosh pit. I've been to your house where there's mosh pit, usually just with the dogs, because you have four dogs. <laughs> Three. Three dogs. They seem like four. Because there's <laughs> two giant like ones. There's two big ones. Yeah. And they bump into you, and they try to take food out of your hand, and they want to lick your face. They don't even know me. Yeah, no, no. They want to take you down. They want to grab onto your sleeve and yeah. pull you to the floor and hang out with them. Yeah. And then the other ones bump into you, and then the little one's just wondering what the fuck's going on. I'm here. so bummed that we got those dogs. Oh, no. I bought, I bought the dogs for her for Christmas, and she hates them. Oh, no. She doesn't hate them. She loves them. But they're not what she wanted. Yeah. It'd be like if somebody... It's like when Dana Gould gives Jerry the van. <laughs> I'm a van guy. I mean, he didn't want a van. He wanted a car. <laughs> oh, I think someone's backing up. No, that's us. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Um, what a gift. What a gamble. You're a gambler. Who, who buys three dogs? <laughs> no, we had one. Okay. <laughs> okay. We had Waffles. Waffles is the little one. Waffles is the little one. Right, right, right. The terrier. <laughs> and Golden Retrievers, when they're little, are just scrumptious. Oh, my God. The best thing and in the world. And then they grow into dogs. <laughs> they're huge. <laughs> and they need a lot of attention. <laughs> was, they really do. They, they want a lot of attention. <laughs> All the time, and it doesn't stop. It's constant. No, they still have puppy energy in their, I think, how old are they? Like nine? Yeah. Nine apiece? <sighs> Holy shit. Yeah, they're a lot. It's yeah, a lot. for sure. It's a lot. I could just, I can feel Amira's energy, because I've been around Amira um, in, in a, many positive ways, but I've seen her like once in, in a, neg like in a, or just like in a not dealing with it vibe, and I can imagine the uh, get out of my fucking way. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then she'll refer to them as my dogs. <laughs> Get your goddamn dogs, Greg. Your dog wants in. Your dog. Your dog wants to eat. The Christmas present. Sometimes she calls them. Oh my god. Yep. There's the Christmas present. Yo, your wife is fucking cold blooded, bro. She's not to be fucked with. No, certainly not. She does not suffer fools. She doesn't suffer fools. And she makes great sourdough bread, oh, so I, I love her to death. Yeah. Forever. Yeah, she's funny as fuck. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, essentially what we're saying is uh, read the signals. Signals are um, whatever signal you're feeling, that feeling of waiting too long or seeing the questions. You either just ask or you just know inherently it's time to bail. And, uh, but it's all based on, but you, uh, not, you really lose nothing with asking, especially in this scenario. This scenario breeds qu questions Yeah. that you then can go, I'm wasting my time or not. Yeah. So just ask. Yeah. Just ask. Just ask. All right. We'll be right back.
Hello, everyone. Are your ears bleeding? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we switched it up today, baby. <laughs> you got the death metal version. Son. Yeah, that was refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked it. I love it. It's so good. Uh, what does this mean where we are here to inspire you with quotes from other people and sometimes Greg? <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes we use It's Greg. been a while since we've used a Greg yeah. quote. Yeah. Uh, I have one. I looked up for men. I looked up inspirational quotes for men. Oh, boy. This one actually isn't bad. This one's good, actually, um, because it doesn't, like, play into that, you know, masculinity bullshit. A great man is hard on himself. A small man is hard on others. <sighs> okay. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> but does that mean a small man or a small man? Well, short people have no reason to live. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. All right. There goes the short listener. <laughs> Later. We had, we had a short listener. <laughs> we had one short listener. <laughs> and he's telling all the other short listeners, don't listen to this show. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Well, I'm going to go over to our Discord. Right, Pat? That's right. God damn it. Our Discord is so dope. Go to our Discord. Discord DTBFF podcast. On Discord, my friends, what does this mean from all kinds of people? And they send some funny shit. Anonymous sent one that says, fuck that shit. That shit does not mean fuck to me. <laughs> I love that the show's getting smarter. <laughs> fuck, for, first of all, fuck, no, fuck you <laughs> and your mom <laughs> oh, and your dogs. <laughs> what do you think of that one? It's, like, a, it's, a, it's okay. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Lola sent one that said, the devil whispered in my ear, you're not strong enough to withstand the storm. I whispered in the devil's ear, I love your eggs. <laughs> I love your eggs. <laughs> I love your eggs? I love your eggs. <laughs> That's the silliest shit I've ever heard of. Pretty good. So silly. Yeah. That's as silly as I'll see you at the bank. I don't see you at the bank. That's as that silly. Um, she said, this one, wouldn't life be easier if we just did this? And it's a picture of a little girl just saying, hey, just say what you mean. Yeah. Just say what you mean. Sure. Or just say what you meme, says Lola. Okay. Just say what you meme. Okay. What do you think of that? It's all right. Yeah. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I think I don't like memes anymore. I hate them. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to go back to our first one. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Yeah. I have one. Okay. Hit me. Failure is the opportunity to begin again only more intelligently. Uh, oh. oh. Henry Ford. <laughs> oh. I don't know that I like Henry Ford. Mm -hmm. Isn't Henry Ford a Nazi sympathizer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we see what you're looking up at late at night. <laughs> <laughs> These were his words to Hitler. <laughs> yeah. What did Hitler say? I concur. <laughs> Hitler. Hitler's. Yeah. Well, here's the opportunity to begin again only more intelligently. Yeah. Hitler knew how to rally a crowd. <laughs> Jesus oh Christ. Oh, my God. Um, actually, that reminds me. Uh, my sister sent one. Uh, <laughs> fucking idiot. Countless millions who have walked this earth before us have gone through this, so this is just an experience we all share. Ted Bundy. <laughs> 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 She's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> Summer keeps sending those. Pat? I have a few here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got one. So happy I don't have to. <clears throat> so happy I don't have a fake image to maintain. What you see is what you get. Some days I'm amazing, other days I'm a wreck. But every day I'm me. Well, fucking, aren't you grand? Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That, 
<laughs> that one's from Pat's personal journal. Oh, no. Holy cow. No, no, no. Hey, man, I'm just me, though. I, I'm just me, man. Some days I'm amazing. Some days I'm great. Some days I'm not that great. Some but you know I what? Suck. On that day, I'm still me, bro. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I've been me the whole time. I could be I could be fucking your wife and stealing your car. I'm still me. I'm still me, man. That's just me. That's just me That's having just a great me being day. Me. That's me you being amazing. I mean? That's just me being amazing. What do you want from me? <laughs> This is who I. This is who you picked as a friend. Yeah. This is on you. Really. I'm just me being me. You shouldn't let me in the house. You don't like me. Yeah. I'm just me being me. Just me I'm, being me. That's it. I'm pretty amazing. I'm amazing. And sometimes the, I'm not amazing. Sometimes I'm not amazing. But the whole time I was me. If the if if you, the takeaway here is I'm me, and that's you should just be grateful I'm me. Yeah. So if you're if you're listening to this and you're you, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Good for Have you. Have you been you the whole time? Good. We really appreciate Who it. Who hasn't been you the whole time? Have you been someone else? Well, you're doing it wrong. Don't be other people. Be you. Even be if you. you is shit. Oh, yeah. No. Even if you is a big pile of garbage. Yeah, at least you're authentic. At least you're an authentic pile of flaming garbage. <laughs> people might hate you, but you're being you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got? So you remember last week I read from Real Man Quotes? God, I love Real Man Quotes. Real Man Quotes is a whole thing. I so cannot fucking wait. I'm going to be pulling from them for a, a little while now. Uh, these are all universally terrible. Get ready to hate. I can't wait. The good I do is a story. The so-called bad I do is history. Doesn't even fucking make sense, you <laughs> dipshit. <laughs> You fucking dipshit. It doesn't even make sense. The so-called bad I do? The what? The quote Is unquote. History? The quote unquote Is history, bad I do. What does that even mean? That's another Henry Ford. Oh, you fucking Ford. dipshit. That's another Hitler quote. The so-called bad I do. Shut up. Oh, no. Oh. Real man quotes. <laughs> They're all terrible. Okay. Here's another one. You killed the innocent in me, and now deal with the demon of me. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ew, is that Slipknot near lyrics? God damn it. It should end with, can you smell what the rock is going <laughs> Can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> Deal with the demon in me. Can you some? <laughs> it doesn't matter what you so-called bad I did. <laughs> Holy shit. Yikes. Oh, that is garbage. That is the worst thing ever. I'm so glad you found that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Holy fuck. God, are we real men then? No, because you, cause we don't. <laughs> not on any day. Not on any day. Not one. Not once do I think like that. <laughs> no, I don't think like that even a little bit. <laughs> I know. I never think shit like that. I never think. Well, guess what? You get the worst parts of me, and I'm a man. <laughs> God. Yeah, that's just fucking ridiculous. Jesus Christ, who hurt you? <laughs> what happened? Talk to your mom and get it worked out. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. All right, we'll be right back. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring the energy. How do you feel? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing Walking the Room. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm Dave. <laughs> this is Greg. And uh, Dave, I will stab you. <laughs> I will stab you so hard in the heart. <laughs> With my phone, <laughs> so that it's blunt and super painful, and then when I get in there, I'll twist and make a hole for myself, and then I'll pull your heart out and shove it down your throat. You fuck with. That's how walking the room used to go. Jesus Christ! That's how walking the room would start. No wonder he started the dollop. 
God. Oh, he was smart to start the dollop. <laughs> oh, man. At least at yeah. the dollop, he's not being threatened to have his heart pulled out in front of him. Like, Oh, he would threaten just as bad. <laughs> what he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Greg, I'm going to snap your glasses off your head and stick the lenses in your eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then I'm going <laughs> to... Jesus Christ, you guys are brutal. It was brutal. But it, but it was... You know, we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a we got a question in <laughs> from on our uh, Discord DTBFF podcast on our Discord. You know, you can record uh, a voice message on Discord. It's true, and mm -hmm. send it to us. So if you mm -hmm. if you can't remember the phone number, or you don't like using the phone because it's old fashioned, <laughs> it's an old fashioned thing to do. Yeah. Leave us a di leave, leave us a voicemail on Discord. You're right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we we'll love your whatever the, whatever you want to send us. We, Sounds good. We would love it. Uh, Martin sent one that says, "Hey guys, I could use some advice. A friend couple of ours just split. The guy was a friend of mine, and the girl was a friend of my partner's before they met each other. They were together for like seven years and were living together when they split. The girl had a habit of telling my partner a bunch of personal stuff." And I asked my partner not to tell me any of it for the sake of the guy's privacy. So I don't really know why they split, but I get the impression that if it was the girl who did the, I get the impression that it was the girl who did the splitting. In the years since they got together, I have become better friends with the guy, and now I really feel bad for him. I want to ask what I can do to support him through this. Uh, he is a pretty reserved guy, and we are in our 30s now, so getting drunk and talking shit isn't going to fly. Why not? Unless you don't drink. But if you still drink, you can drink and talk shit. I don't see why not. That's an option. Uh, I asked him if he wanted to talk about it, but he politely declined. I've been trying to get him out of the house since he works from home and it's now living alone to keep him from getting cooped up and turning into a troll, but it rarely works. What can I do to help my friend? Any suggestions would be welcome. First off, go to your wife, get the dirt, and share it. Yep. <laughs> She's got every ounce of information. You're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard to help somebody who isn't willing to help themselves. So until he wants some kind of relationship that with you that, like, he's sitting in it. Yeah. There's not a lot you can do about it. It's tough. Yeah, I didn't really want to talk about it. Uh... I didn't really have any interest in talking about my divorce when I first we first split, and like I had friends on the phone that would call me up and try to get me to like move to Vegas because they also didn't want to talk about it with me. <laughs> 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 like they felt uncomfortable at the emotional aspect of it, and they're like, you know, it'd be cool, dude, if we lived together and uh, you moved to Vegas. And he brought it up so much that I snapped at him because I was like, you know, going through my shit, but eventually I was like, stop trying to get me to move to Vegas, okay? I'm going to stop being your friend, and I might plunge my phone into your heart if you fucking bring it up again. It drove me crazy. So, uh, sometimes... Getting asked to move to Vegas is... That's, like, such a bummer. <laughs> it really... It so is. It's, like, the worst thing. Hey, you feeling bad? Move to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Mo move to where there's absolutely no water source. <laughs> You're landlocked. And it's hot as fuck all the time until it's freezing cold all the time. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, but, uh, yeah, sometimes during a, a heavy seven years, fuck, man, I barely... And luckily, I was going through my divorce during quarantine... And, and and not lucky, luckily at the same time. So I had no reason to go outside. Right. I would die. It was, you know. So uh, I stayed. That was like my excuse. Like, I can't go out. I can't go on a six feet walk, social distancing walk with you because I'm afraid to get COVID. Also, yeah. I don't want to openly weep in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's part of it. I think, obviously, you let them know that you're there for them. You hit him up every once in a while, but there isn't a whole lot that you can do until he's ready to move on, and he'll get there. Yeah, also just focus... He'll move on. Seven years is a long time. Yeah, focus on the friendship you guys have. So what are things that you guys have as in your relationship, and then just text him or call him about, about that. 
yeah and those kind of things yeah. what are your interests yeah because he probably would like to talk about anything but his relationship literally mm -hmm. anything else yeah um and yeah you can't force him to come out of the house so just like <laughs> let him know just let him know you're there that's all i'm right there stand outside his house and hold up a boom box <laughs> really let him know you're there yeah <laughs> um on to a reddit remix Oh my god, I haven't beatboxed into a, this microphone in a while. Reddit remix. Okay, this one I'm excited for because we've... You've told us about it several times and we keep not doing it. <laughs> but now we're here. Fucker. Okay. I, a 21-year-old male, am convinced my 20-year-old wife's pet rabbit thinks my wife is his mate and it's ruining our marriage. It all started when I was dating my wife. I met her four years ago, and we have been dating all four years. <laughs> she has had the rabbit since before I met her. The little bastard is old and saggy and partially blind. <laughs> Some parts of his body is missing patches of fur because he pulls it out to make a nest for himself and my wife. <laughs> uh, when we met the rabbit... <laughs> I don't like where this is going. <laughs> I hate it so much. I love that we're talking about a rabbit. <laughs> When we met the rabbit uh, was not a major issue. Why would it be? It's a rabbit. It would scratch and bite at me, but my wife assured me he was just nervous to have another person in her apartment as my wife and the rabbit lived alone since my wife was 18. We have been married one year now, and the rabbit is wreaking havoc on our marriage. <laughs> but my wife refuses to do anything because to her, the rabbit is her baby, and she loves him more than when I first moved in, the rabbit did not uh, do much to me or uh, us other than the previously mentioned bites and scratches, but he shows my wife too much affection for just an owner. Uh, we will be doing... Say that again. <laughs> when I first moved in, the rabbit did not do much to me or us other than the previously mentioned bites and scratches, but he shows my wife too much affection for just an owner. What the fuck does that even mean? I don't even, I have no clue. <laughs> Too much affection for an owner. <laughs> From a rabbit. <laughs> Who's the rabbit supposed to show the proper amount of affection towards? Maybe a house plant? <laughs> If the house plant grows if towards If somebody her, came into he... my house and told me my dog liked me too much, <laughs> I would slug them in the sternum. <laughs> Okay, we will be doing anything, and she will have uh, the rabbit with her on top of her chest, on her breasts, licking them, and her face. She will not put it down at all whenever she is home with it. We eat dinner, he is there. She goes to the bathroom, he comes with. Uh, she is showering, uh, he waits outside for her, watching her nude in the shower. Wife does Oh my god, this guy's so <laughs> fucked up. Wife does not even let me in the bathroom with her. <laughs> it was gone to the point where whenever I show my wife affection, the rabbit seeks revenge on me. <laughs> Sometimes not immediately, but at times he does attack me on the spot. When I kiss my wife, sometimes I find little tiny brown balls. He is shit in my closet. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> You're crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I hope your wife leaves you immediately. I hope she marries the bunny and you were right the whole time. Totally. I hope you were right the whole time. I hope she's cheating on you with the bunny. I hope the bunny does shit on your sheets. I'd shit on your sheets. Yeah, I, yeah for sure. I'd shit on your face. While you were awake talking to me, I'd trip you, pull my pants down, and shit in your mouth, stupid. It's a goddamn rabbit. Seek therapy. Yeah, get some help. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, if you're jealous of your pets, you can email us in at dtbffpodcast <laughs> at gmail.com and tell us how your dog, rabbit, frog might be fucking your wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could uh, ch support us at DTBF, or uh, excuse me, you can support us over at Patreon, patreon.com slash dtbffpodcast. You can also uh, follow us on Instagram at dtbffpodcast. And hello, what's up, buddy? Uh, 
you can follow you can follow us at DTBFF podcast and on Instagram, and you can uh, uh, follow me at Kane Holloway. I'm at Scraggers. I'm at DTBFF producer Pat. And you can uh, call in the show. What's that number, Pat? Uh, that number is three two three three seven nine five five four four. Don't take bullshit from fuckers. Fuck them. Hey there! If you like the show, you can find bonus episodes and more at our Patreon at Patreon.com/DTBFFPodcast, and then rate the show five stars on iTunes because it's the right thing to do. All music by the Rating Monarchs, produced by Patrick Kelly. Mm-hmm.